What's up, my geeks? Jeffrey Powers here from Geekazine. Today, we're taking a look at this right here. This is the Wacom Move Inc., which is a basically a screen, but it's a high-end, high-quality screen for drawing and for more precision coloring and use for any of your productions. We're going to unbox this and take a look at this next on Geekazine. What's up, my geeks? Jeffrey Powers from Geekazine, Think Magazine, Put Into Geek, where you can find me at geekazine.com, youtube.com forward slash geekazine. You can like, subscribe, comment, and bell notification so you know when the next video comes out. This is the Wacom Move Inc. It's a 13.3 inch screen that does a lot more for high end video work, Photoshopping, or anything like that. Of course, the company did send me product to review, but they are not sponsoring this video. They do not have any say in how this video is being put together. All opinions are of my own. If you've got a product that you want me to review, check out the contact page and we can get this into shop and take a look at it. Let's take a look at some of the specs of this device right here. It is a 13.0 inch OLED touchscreen. It comes with the Pro Pen 3 with multiple nibs. So you can draw, you know, if you need calligraphy nib, if you need a regular soft thin nib or a thick nib, it's got all of those. It's thin and lightweight. It can do 10 bit color for multiple profiles. If you're doing video, if you're doing Photoshopping or anything like that, it connects via USB-C cable and it works on your Mac, your Windows, Chrome OS, and Android devices. So if you've got a Chrome OS laptop, you switch over to a Windows PC, switch over to Mac like I do, then you can take the Move Inc. with you everywhere. And you can use it more than just photo editing and video editing. I might even be putting it into my video production because it does have the touch screen ability and the pen ability. And there's a lot of things you can do in what I'm doing with something like this. So let's go ahead and open this up and check it out and see what we got. First of all, we got the uh, tablet right here in a nice case. We've got the USB-C, it's a C to C cable, the pen over here, right there. And then of course, uh, all the instructions and everything like that. Here we go, we'll go, oh, go ahead and open this and bring this out. Like I said, 13.3 inches across. So it's fairly small. It's like if you had a MacBook Air. We do have some extra features to it. On the front, of course, we have the screen, 13.3 inch screen. You'll see the, there's a border around there. Bottom, we have absolutely nothing here. On the side here, we have a, a button, which I'm not sure uh, what it does yet. And of course the USB-C connection, nothing on the top end. On this side, we have, looks like another button of some sort and a USB-C on this side. So if your laptop's on the left side, then you can put it, uh, the cable in the appropriate side. On the back, nothing there. It's got a couple different rubber stoppers here. This is a really, really light device here. And then of course it sets on the table. If you need to raise it a little bit, I don't see a kickstand anywhere so you'll probably have to put something underneath it but with the rubber stoppers you won't move around too much what we're going to do next is we're going to connect it up and we'll see how this works i plugged it in the USB-C. this is a five gigabit 60 hertz cable keep that in mind you want to keep your cables with the devices that they come with plugged it in turned on the computer it worked just fine. It's right now it's mirroring the screen, but of course I can set it to extend or whatever as I want to. It is a touch screen. So if I hit the windows button, you'll see windows pop up here, or we can use the pen, which we have not opened up yet. As I am setting this up, uh, it looks like we're going to have some sort of Wacom driver downloader just to instantly come in and we can go through the install. While that's installing, we'll take a look at the pen really quick. It's fairly straightforward. We do have one nib on the top. Uh, that's basically the pen point right there. And then if we screw unscrew this back here, we have more nibs that we can choose from. It's an aluminum shaft. We've got three buttons on here. Uh, which we will play with as we go. It does not run on battery, so this is self-sufficient. So keep that close to the Wacom tablet. Of course, Geekazine has a whole bunch of merch, including t-shirts and hoodies. 
Like, for instance, the Geekazine logo hoodie. We got some great t-shirts, including 80s Jesus Saved Me, Guardian of the Geekery, the original Geek AI t-shirt. We have a couple variations of this one. And then uh, I like Geek Butts, and I cannot live. There are several more and more that are being added to the uh, Geekazine merch page. So you can check that out over at Teespring. If you're on YouTube, you'll see those links below. And then over at Amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash Geekazine. I appreciate that very much because it does support the channel. Now let's get back into this video. We played with the buttons. I actually switched the cable over to the right side here. So I'm going to press the button. We're going to see what we've got. We've got, we can choose our language, which is of course, in this case, English. We can go to home. And now of course we're touching the screen for this. As you can see, we can choose our input source, our display settings, our tablet buttons. We can change our brightness right here. We can change our input source. It looks like we can have it auto set or maybe yeah, you can set up two different laptops, one on the right side, one on the left side. Our display settings right here where we can change our color mode, our brightness, our black level and everything like that. The tablet button right there, which of course it'll tell you if you want this as the express key or do you want it to turn on and off or do you want it to do the menu? So we're gonna say on the left side, I wanna do the express key and I'll show you that in a minute so we'll go ahead and go back here we've got other settings in which uh, the other settings will actually change the take more power from the uh, screen so keep that in mind uh, depending on what laptop you have you can see including a factory reset I set the display toggle. I just wanted to show you this. So when I press this, it says it requires a system that has two displays. And also notice how I'm not even touching the screen right now, but I am moving that mouse around. We'll open something and show you how the touch screen works. First of all, I'm going to hit the first button closest to the nib as I'm pointing at the uh, screen. And I can actually change my pen size and I had to I was playing around with this and the pen size was too small. I couldn't see the lines at all. So I'm gonna move it down to something that we can actually see and then just start drawing on here. We got uh, just black. So you can see, as you can see, simple lines. I can make this uh, a little bit bigger. Now we should have some nice thick lines. So I could do my Geekazine logo, my old Geekazine logo, like that. I could change the colors or, or anything like that. Second button on here, allows me to move the screen, the uh, the page around in Photoshop. If you're using another program, it might do something different. And then that third button, uh, I'm not exactly sure what it does just yet. You can also use your hands to, to move things around. In some cases, you can use your hand and the pen to do different things. So whether you're doing some really intricate movements uh, in here, you can really zoom in on something and say, OK, I want to draw something like that in there and then bring that down like that as you can see what's going on here and how it will work so you can definitely play on it you can calibrate it to whatever profile color profile that you are working in whether it be adobe rgb or some of the other color schemes this is one way that i will probably use the wacom tablet uh, for any type of video production because this is a touch screen and it gives me a lot of ability to work in programs like vmix or wirecast or obs or anything like that so we're going to start with just the basic vmix we've got three scenes the three scenes that you're seeing as i'm switching back and forth and all i have to do is uh, start hitting buttons and i can go back here i can come over here and i can cut here i could fade into here you get the idea uh, i can bring in my emulator here and then I can change where, I, you know, my scenes through the PTZ camera that I run through. I can do a lot of movement and I can go like this and then bring it over here. And then you're seeing a different scene from me. Bring it back over here. I don't need to use the pen. I could actually just uh, use my fingers to do this. It's a smaller screen, so you just got to be very careful where you touch. But you can change the resolution on the screen. If I'm doing any type of production, this is going to be perfect for here. Within the software, I can make a lot of changes like what those buttons on the side do, what the Pro Pen is all about, how we can set this up. Right now, it's set to erase, pan scroll, and right click. If I touch the screen, it's like I've 
click the mouse, if I hold down the first button, it'll be like I secondary clicked. And of course you can change all of these functions if you need to. So let's look at some pros and cons. First of all, I really like the screen great resolution right there. I could definitely see a lot of work happen. I like the pen. I like the fact that you don't have to put a battery in the pen. You don't have to charge this pen to use it. Couple cons with this. As, as I like the pen, there's no place to put the pen. I, I've had some uh, tablets and devices. It's magnetic on the side, so you just put the pen on the side and it would stick there. This has no holder, so I you'll have to watch where this pen goes. Next thing is it's meant to be portable, but yet we got this cloth thing right here. You'll have to probably go out and purchase something that will replace this. But the best part about that is it's small enough. So you put your laptop in, you put this in with it. You, you're just not going to notice it. The only other con is, yes, you have a USB-C cable to it, but you want that wired connection, especially if you're doing something very specific. You don't want it to cut out at the wrong time and mess up your project. So that, that cable, it's a necessary thing. There is no kickstand to it, but I'll probably make a 3D print stand. As for it sitting on the table, it does a great job. I did put something underneath to raise it up so you could see what was going on. But even on this, this is is pretty slippery table it's holding pretty well as i move it and of course you can hold on to it as you're drawing some people like to do that uh you could you could set it to portrait mode or a landscape mode from there and then just uh do what you need to do if i put my hand on like this it will not recognize it but of course if i touch it like this it will recognize the touches finally the wacom base price is about 749 dollars and then of course they do offer a version with a removable stand. You can check that out all at the Wacom store. But for the most part, a very thin tablet connected up to your computer, basically a second monitor for your computer to do whatever you needed to do, whether it be Photoshopping, especially nowadays with all this AI, you can get really precise in what you need to change. What do you guys think of the Wacom Move Inc? Is it a tablet that you have? Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments below over at geekazine.com or youtube.com forward slash geekazine. You can like, subscribe, comment, and bell notifications so you know when the next video comes out. Till next time, my name is Jeffrey Powers. Thanks a lot for watching. You guys geek out and create some really cool stuff with the Wacom Moving tablet.